All right, so today I want to talk about custom web components and how to insert SVG icons into the component. So why would you want to do this? Why would you want to use SVG? And sort of the mindset that you need to be in when you're building web components. So if I'm building a web component like this one right here, so just a simple little background color in a, in a box, We've got a couple of buttons, we've got a heading, and on my buttons, I wanna add some icons. Very common thing to do, you've got an icon and some text as the label on the button. Now, normally, when you're thinking about this, you're saying, okay, well, if I import a font that's got icons in it, I can use that font, or I've got SVG files that are in my website, I can just use those on my buttons. And that's fine, and that's true. You can do that if it's your own website. But if you're building a web component, then you have to think about who is going to be using your component. Generally speaking, it's not just for yourself. It's going to be for other developers, for other websites. So you need to minimize the number of files. And hopefully what's going to happen is this web component is going to be a single file that gets used by some other developer on their website. You're building a component for reuse. It's not a one-off thing. Components are meant to be reused. It's like you're inventing a new piece of HTML. So all the behaviors and all the styling is embedded inside of this one file. So in this case, right here, what we have, um, I've got my index.html, just the basic HTML. Here's the component that we're placing on the page. I've got my main JavaScript for the file. I'm not doing anything in here. Actually, I'll just minimize this. So I've got my main JS. I'm not really doing anything inside of here. I'm importing the component just so that script will run and make it something that I can use in my HTML. I can select it using that tag that's in the HTML, but I'm not going to do anything with it for this example. In my main CSS, this is the CSS for me as the website developer, the website designer, the person who's building this whole website, not just this component. So thinking, thinking of it as two separate people, one person building the website, this is my CSS. And then the component itself is going to be this separate file. So we've got you know, an HTML template that we're going to use. We're going to load into the Shadow DOM. So we're going to clone this template and place it inside there. So that's how we're building this component is with some HTML and CSS. Now, one developer is building this, the reusable component. The other developer is building the website. So I want to, as the component developer, make things easier for the website developer. I don't want to tell them, okay, you know, here's the JavaScript file that you need. And then here's the font file you need to download. And here's the images that you need to download. And then you have to make sure that you're placing all the images in the right folders and with the right relative paths. They're not going to want to have to edit anything in this script. You want to make it easier for them. So all they have to do is, in the script, add this one line. And then this could point to an external URL. Or if they download it and place it here inside their folders, they can point to that relative location. And then that's all they, they have to do. You can add documentation to say, sure, in the CSS, if you're defining colors, you know, if you use these names, these are ones that my component uses automatically. So you can style it to match your website if you use these variable names in your CSS, these CSS properties. Okay, so we have that. Now, what we want to do to make it easier for the end developer is say, inside of here, I'm going to actually embed an SVG image. Now we can do that because SVG images, like here, this is an SVG file. Let me expand this a bit. An SVG file is just text. Scalar vector graphics, it's just text. So if you've built one, I've kept it inside of here. So if you want a copy of this, it's down inside the description, the repo with all of this code. So the SVG file, I have it here just as an example if you want to play around with it. It's just a quick little skull that I built. This text can be embedded inside of the component. So as the component developer, I can just place the text inside of my template. 
and then it's part of my component. It's not an extra file that somebody has to include in their website. It's going to be right inside of here. So here in the skull, if I just take all of this text right here like this, if I copy that and then I come into my template and I go down here and I'm going to say right here inside this second button. So let's close this preview and this and minimize this to the side a little bit. There we go. So inside these buttons is where I want to place the text. So I'm going to do it two different ways. One where I can add hover effects and one where it's just part of the CSS. So to start with, I copy the SVG and I'm just going to place it in the HTML. So right here, I paste it, I save it. Now this has become part of my interface right here. So that image is placed inside of it. We have the SVG and I've got a little bit of CSS right here for it. So inside this button, if there's an SVG element, I've made it inline block so I can give it a specific width and height. So the, it's got a view box to find inside of it. So inside of here, the view box, it's 150 by 150 pixels. So it is a perfect square, which means inside of here, two by two, whatever units, that's how big it's going to be. And I can play with these numbers and change the size of it just quite easily. Like if I made it 12 by 12, save that. There we go. We've got a much bigger icon. So two by two, there we go. Something that fits within this button. Okay, so that's it for embedding this. And then if you want to add hover effects to it, we can do that as well. So on a button, when the button's being hovered on the SVG, then inside of that, when we're going to um, want to change the colors for this thing, we can come in here and say, okay, those variables that I've got that I'm using for the colors, and say that the fill color, the fill color is going to be secondary. So that's one of the properties. When we hover, there we go. We're changing the color, the background color, the fill color. And right here, eyes and nose in my SVG, I just know that I've got the, um, the names inside of these elements. up here. There we go. And inside here, we're going to say that the fill will be on secondary. And oh, I did. Yeah. So we've got to add those class names here. So on the eyes and nose, so the two ellipses, those are the eyes. So we'll say class equals eyes. And I'll paste that in both eyes. You can see now that we've got the eyes showing up. And then for the nose, that's in the two rectangles here. There we go. So now we have those two colors being used as part of our hover effect on our SVG. And we didn't have to get the person who was building the website to include anything else in their site. It was just part of the SVG. Now, if you don't have a hover effect, if you don't care about changing, you just want to embed it. You don't have to put the SVG like this. The SVG can be part of a CSS file that you're loading, or it can be just in the CSS. So here, for this one, what I'm going to do is inside of a button, inside of an italic element, which a lot of people use as an I for icon right here. So here's the first button. and. Here's the I element, the italic element from the original HTML. Right inside of here, I want to set a background image on that. And that's the other way that you can add CS, um, SVGs into your CSS. So we're going to say, hey, the background image. And then it's going to be a URL. Now, you can, with a URL, make it um, an external resource that you're loading. Uh, so if you have on the same website where the sample component JavaScript is, if there's resources there, you can technically load them here. The only problem with that is if you are offline, if you lose access to the internet, 
it means that you're not going to get the images. You're not going to get those scripts. So you do want to have, it's better for the website developer if you take it and you actually make the component file part of the website and then you embed inside of it the SVG for these icons, images. So inside the URL, instead of pointing directly to a URL like HTTP something, we're going to use data URIs. So we're going to say data image slash SVG plus XL and comma. And then after this prefix, you can add this SVG. So all of this right here, the SVG down to the end of the SVG, copy that. It would be nice if we could just paste it right here. But if you put it inside of here, this URL, it does have to be URL encoded. So there are websites, lots of them that can do this for you. I've got one right here, urlencoder.org. Just take your SVG, paste it in here, encode, and there we go. This is the SVG markup uh, encoded as something that would be valid to have in a URL. So angle brackets are converted to percent three C and so on. So I'm going to just copy this to my clipboard, come back in here and place it right here. Paste, save, and we come back and there it is. So we don't have hover effects. We can't add hover effects when it is a background image like this unless you are changing the background image. So you have a different background image data URL that you've created with different fill and stroke colors. If you do that, you can swap out the entire image, but we can't do the hover effects using the class names, just like we did down here. But there it is. There's two different ways with the CSS or with the HTML to embed SVG, to have SVG icons as part of your component in a way that doesn't force the user to know anything about how the component is built. It doesn't force them to have to download any additional files. So I hope that all makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.